This video is sponsored by Setapp. Okay, so for the past two years, the primary computer that I've been using mainly to put together these videos has been this guy, my 2015 iMac. I've loved this computer. It's been an absolute workhorse that made it possible to not only edit 4K video, but it gave me access to this gorgeous built-in 5K display. I've pushed this computer to the brink and we've had many late nights together. And as awesome as it is, with all the plugins, OS updates, etc., it's really on its last legs. And as sad as I am about it, it's time to retire old Betsy. Now I tried really hard to wait for the new iMac that's been rumored for months, which allegedly will have a much needed overhaul when it comes to design, and most importantly, Apple Silicon. Apple's homemade chips have been a resounding success, far exceeding everyone's expectations, and I've been waiting on pins and needles for the next iteration of Macs to drop. But after the last video took way too long to put together, it was the straw that broke the camel's back, I just couldn't take it anymore. And I decided to get a computer that could hold me over until the new iMac or MacBook Pros drop, and I ended up going with this guy, the base model M1 Mac Mini. Now, I get it. iMac to Mac Mini can seem like a downgrade on the surface, especially when you look at the specs, but all the reviews show that this computer equipped with the M1 chip is performing better than some of the new Mac Pros, and it only costs $699. So today, I'm gonna to be going over my review of how this computer has been so far, going over its pros and cons, to help you get a better understanding if it's the right one for you. Now, before we jump into this, in case you're new here, I'm Jason. I would really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. It really does help me out. And if you're a tech junkie like me, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date with all the reviews. Okay, first, let's talk about physical design. There really hasn't been any noticeable change at all from past iterations. But one thing I will note, it's kind of surreal how small this computer is when you actually have it in your hands. I mean, I've had portable hard drives larger than this. It has a classic stainless steel unibody enclosure with these super sharp flat edges and the ultra clean Apple logo in the center. All the IO and the power button are on the back, which helps maintain a simple ultra minimalistic setup that doesn't require a ton of real estate. Now, one concern of mine, given how small the enclosure is, was how it would handle thermals. Apple hasn't always been the best at this, and it doesn't seem like there's much breathing room in there at all. But to Apple's credit, even when I'm pushing this to the max, the M1 Mini stays shockingly cool and quiet. Even when the fan is on, it makes virtually no noise. It almost makes it seem like it's a fanless device. The other concern that I had that no amount of software optimization could solve was the limited I.O. I mean, it's not bad, but you only get two Thunderbolt 3 ports, one of which is used by my monitor, and after that, you only get a full-size HDMI port, two USB 3.1 ports, a headphone jack, and an Ethernet port. Again, it's not the worst, but the lack of an SD card slot is a bummer for a creator like myself, which ultimately means I'll have to rely on some sort of dongle to get the I.O. that I need. Now, an important thing to note if you've never purchased a Mac Mini before, it literally just comes with a computer and power cable. That's it. You're gonna need a monitor, keyboard, and some kind of mouse or trackpad in order to operate this thing. And though most people have spare parts lying around, but if you don't, that could very much turn this quote-unquote cheap computer into quite the heavy investment. But overall, the M1 Mac Mini is a great design. It's super minimal, Apple all the way, and it's particularly appealing if you wanna keep your setup ultra clean. Now, before we get into just how well the M1 Mac Mini performs, I wanna take a quick moment to give a shout out to Setapp, today's video sponsor. One of the things that you should always do whenever you get a new Mac is to set it up with the tools and apps that you need in order to make sure that you can take advantage of everything the computer has to offer and to make sure that it can last you a very, very long time. And that's where Setup comes in. Setup is like the Netflix of apps. And what I mean by that is that it's subscription-based, so you pay either a monthly or annual fee, and it gives you access to over 200 full versions of applications for your Mac, and it's incredibly easy to set up and use. All you have to do is download the Setup application, and once you fire it up, you'll see that it's strikingly familiar with the traditional Mac App Store. That's honestly one of the things I love about Setup. They made it extremely straightforward to find and get what you're looking for. The apps can be searched by category, which is really helpful. Click into any one of them and they'll give you more detailed information on what the app does, as well as visuals on how the app works. And downloading is as simple as clicking the download button. One app that I always download whenever I get a new setup is an app called Clean My Mac. It's probably the most simple yet powerful tool to ensure that your Mac is optimized to be its best. And if you're subscribed to Setup, you get the full version of Clean My Mac at your fingertips. And man, it's super useful. And that's just one out of a long list of incredibly powerful apps that you have at your disposal through Setup that could legit transform your Mac into a significantly more capable machine. 
Setup also has these pre-curated collections based on what you're looking for, which is awesome. And no lie, I've personally discovered some new apps that I've never heard of before that have dramatically improved my productivity. And Setup is constantly updating their portfolio with the latest and greatest additions. If you guys are interested in checking out Setup, you can give it a try using the link below. Trust me, you're gonna be surprised at just how much more you could get done with your Mac. Download Setup now and see what you're missing out on. Okay, let's jump into the meat and potatoes of this review and talk performance. Now again, I went with the base model here. So it comes equipped with Apple's M1 processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, and 256 gigabytes of internal SSD storage. Eight gigabytes of RAM in 2021 is strikingly low. I mean, most phones have more RAM than that these days. And considering that I'm like one of those people that have 12 apps open at a time and like 20 tabs on Chrome, I was legit concerned that I would run into performance issues. And even though I was pushing the limit with the eight gigabytes of RAM, I've had virtually zero slowdowns whatsoever, even in extreme conditions. I mean, I can edit raw 4K video on Final Cut Pro while screen recording on my 5K display with a ton of apps open in the background, and there isn't a single stutter on my timeline. If I were to attempt that on my iMac, first of all, the fans would be a max blast for sure, and I would get the spinning wheel of death anytime I even tried to move the cursor. I know it's been touted to death, but seriously, the amount of heavy lifting the M1 Mac Mini could do while being dead silent is seriously mind boggling. Even when I'm applying multiple layers of motion graphics, which always choked up my iMac, the Mac Mini handles it like a piece of cake. The internal hard drive being an SSD makes everything open up in an instant, and all of this has come together to significantly improve my workflow. It seriously almost makes me cry that I don't have to be up all night waiting for clips to render. The overall time it takes for me to edit a video has noticeably gotten way shorter. Now, as awesome as the performance has been, the storage has been an issue for me. With only 256 gigabytes, if I were to solely rely on that, I would run out of space super fast. My solution to that has been using multiple Samsung T5 SSDs, and editing off the Thunderbolt 3 port is super fast and a great workaround for content creators. The other area that's kind of an expected performance lack is the sound. Yes, the Mac Mini comes with a built-in speaker, but it's not good. It's really quiet and super tinny. You're gonna wanna invest in some dedicated speakers if you plan on using this at all for content creation or consumption. But the other thing that's extremely impressive about the Mac Mini is that it can support a display at up to 6K resolution. So yes, it can support Apple's Pro Display XDR. Plus it can also connect to a second monitor via the HDMI cable and pop out a 4K resolution, which is pretty incredible for a modestly spent out, relatively cheap machine. I personally have mine connected to the LG 5K ultrafine display, and it looks incredible. Really great for me when I'm both editing and watching videos. And this to me is a very pro feature as these displays are meant for professionals. And with that, there's really no other way to say this. This computer is absolutely phenomenal. This is the fastest and most capable Mac I've ever used, and I can't believe I'm saying that about a Mac mini. The M1 chip really is a game changer. And if Apple got the first generation this good, man, I'm dying to see what the next generation is gonna look like, especially on their more pro devices. I could say confidently that this will be a great choice for you if you're coming from an older Mac, particularly one that's running on fumes like mine was. I mean, the value you're getting here with the price tag is truly unmatched. The only thing that you'll wanna keep in mind are the things that you'll need in order for the Mac mini to be operational. If you don't have a monitor, keyboard, mouse, speakers, that price tag will be a lot larger than 699. But if you already have these things lying around, the M1 Mac mini is such a solid choice if you need a computer right now. It's just incredible. I really don't know how else to describe it. Okay, that's about it for this review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys found it useful. Again, I'd really appreciate it. Check out these other recent reviews in case you missed them. Let me know your thoughts below and I'll see you guys in the next one.